Hi, so welcome to um, part three um, of this series that I'm, I'm short series that I'm making, um, uh, covering um, some of the themes in um, Andy Clark and Jakob Howey's books um, discussing predictive processing. Um, in the last uh, video, we talked about um, prediction error, um, and prediction error being um, the difference between um, a model or predictive model and the data. Um, and the idea is that in predictive processing is that the, one of the core mechanisms um, in predictive processing is that the brain is constantly trying to reduce prediction error uh, wherever it can. Um, and in doing so, um, it uses the prediction error to update models, um, predictive models, that can make better um, inferences about the causes in the world. So in this video we're going to be talking about the perceptual hierarchy um, and this is sort of working out a bit more of the detail about how predictive processing might work in the brain. Um, so what I've got is a sort of simplified um, hierarchy um, which shows worldly cause. So we're going to let's just talk about um, visual the visual system because it's, it's, it's the sort of paradigm case. Um, worldly cause could be um, sunlight hitting the um, photoreceptors in the retina. Um, and then what we have here is this two-way flow. We've got prediction errors going up the hierarchy from low levels to higher areas. And then we have top-down predictions coming from high levels down to low levels. So what's happening is that at each level, let's say at the lowest level here, um, there's a top-down prediction saying, predicting what that sensory input is going to look like. And then um, there's a prediction error unit, which we'll talk about later, which then says, well, there's a mismatch here between the predictions and the input, and the prediction error will then go up to the next level in the hierarchy. Same thing happens again in the middle area. Is the middle area is getting top-down predictions from the highest area. It's saying, is there a difference? Is there something wrong here? Um, and then it's sending its prediction error up to the highest level. And each level then has to um, use this prediction error to, to, to change um, its models, to change its predictions that it's then going to send back down the hierarchy. Um, so the, something to note here is that in the fact that it's a hierarchy means that at each level it only needs to predict the input from the level below. Um, it doesn't have to predict, you know, the highest area doesn't have to predict the input from the lowest area directly. Um, it's this layered um, this layered approach. Okay, so what do we need to actually to, to do this um, on a sort of a neuroscience level? Um, well, we're going to need an expectation unit. So we're going to need something that can send top-down predictions about um, what, what it's expecting um, at lower levels of the hierarchy. Um, and by doing this, it can suppress the signal that's coming from lower levels. Um, and it's for the deep um, pyramidal cells might be able to play this role, um, although um, I think it's all sort of still being worked out exactly uh, on a sort of cellular basis. But um, deep pyramidal cells might be um, a good candidate for this role as an expectation unit. Then we have um, its sort of opposite, if you like, the prediction error unit. This is something that's providing a feedback sig signal that informs the level above in the hierarchy hang on a sec, you haven't got things quite right. And it sends there's a message, it sends a message that there's a difference between the predictions from the level above and the input from below. Um, and it's superficial pyramidal cells that are thought to play this role. So what does this actually look like? Um, like a true hierarchy, how it actually looks, it can get pretty complicated. This is a diagram from um, Carl Friston's work. Um, Carl Friston is, um, cited many, many times throughout both books. Um, he seems to be one of the sort of pioneers in this area. Um, as you can see, it can get a little bit complicated. So I've made a more realistic, but still um, slightly abstract um, diagram to show how this might work um, in the visual system. So um, rather than saying the low and the high areas in the, in the brain, I've, I've labeled them so we've got at the bottom, the lateral geniculate in the, in the thalamus. Then we've got going upwards, we've got the primary visual area, then the extra area, and at the top, the parietal and uh, frontal cortex. 
Um, so in a real world system, let's try and think how is this going to work. Well, the primary visual area is going to be sending down its predictions about what the sensory input is going to look like. Um, uh, and and then in the uh, lateral geniculate, it's going to be looking at those predictions saying, is there something different? And then sending that prediction error up the hierarchy. Um, so prediction error um, goes up with the hierarchy and top-down predictions go down. And those predictions are those expectations. Okay. So there's something else that um, kind of needs to be uh, commented on that's really important is that um, in the environment, there's, there's lots of, um, you know, the signal noise ratio um, changes all the time. So sometimes there's a sensory input that's noisy um, and uncertain, um, such as when you're in sort of low light conditions or busy pubs or bustling restaurants with different smells and sounds and everything's going on. Um, based on contextual cues, the brain can actually well, within the predictive processing theory, it can make estimates about how precise the input um, is, is likely to be and use neuromodulation to change the gain on prediction error units. So the brain can um, have a guess at how precise um, the, 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 the information, how precise the signal is going to be, um, and then modulate how much gain to put on the prediction error units. So high precision expectations, expectations that there's going to be nice high precision um, uh, data will increase the gain on prediction error units. Um, so high gain on the prediction error units will drive prediction errors up the hierarchy. In contrast, um, when there's low expectation for precision, um, the prediction error will not make its way to higher areas. Um, and the, the, the consequence of this, of this means that there's a, then a reliance. Um, the the top-down predictions are given an, a, a huge weight in perceptual influence. Um, and so this, this can actually explain a few things that, that, they, that sound um, intuitive. Um, it explains that um, why perceptual illusions and hallucinations are more common uh, when the sensory input is noisy um, and and imprecise, um, for instance, in whispering crowds or the dark corners of the periphery of our vision. Um, so when there when there's a lot of uncertainty, when the precision is expected to be um, low, and um, the top the top down um, inferences take over, the top down um, expert um, predictions take over. Um, and that is more classically thought of as, as hallucination because the, the, the in, there is no, um, the input has been, from lower levels have been dampened down and the top uh, top down predictions taking over. Okay, um, I'm just returning to this um, hierarchy once more to just show um, where this neuromodulation can take place and this red arrows, those, those then are, um, inputting onto the prediction error units and they can either turn up the gain or have low gain um, and if there's high uh, if it's expecting high precision it will then turn up the gain and send those prediction errors straight up to the top of the hierarchy if there's a uh, low um, expectation for precision then those top down predictions are gonna um, are gonna take over um, so there's one last part for this video, which is on attention. Um, so prediction, prediction processing has something important to say about attention. And one of the slogans that's found in um, both surfing uncertainty and the predictive, predictive mind is, um, attention is nothing but optimization of precision expectations. Um, it's a little bit wordy as a slogan, but um, what it means is that the focus of our attention is a way of us to sample data that we expect will be precise um, and in doing so we turn up the gain on the prediction error uh, prediction error units in that region so um, another way of putting this is that we sample the world for precise sensory information that will help us prove our current hypothesis about the world 
Um, and if there's a prediction error, this error will be propagated to the highest areas of the brain because of the high gain on the prediction error units. Um, and this propagation of uh, prediction error will then result in a revision of the current hypothesis. Um, so it kind of means, you know, when, when we're focusing on things, when we're looking um, and we're being attentive, um, he hearing out for something, what's happening here is that we are, we are, we are sampling the, the, the data that we think is most precise, we're turning up the gain on those units, um, and then we can then revise our hypothesis if it's not what we expect. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how this um, this turning up the gain or, or the changing in precision expectations can go wrong um, and what implications this might have on um, the neuroscience of uh, different mental uh, mental illnesses.